I'm your host, Heather Lutze. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hopefully you've grabbed a snack and a cup of coffee and are ready to do some fun learning with Pinterest. It's an amazing, amazing uh, tool for business. So I'm thrilled to, sh to share you all of my knowledge and experience with this amazing tool. This is Get Found with Pinterest. So as we go through here, I just want to first of all introduce myself. Uh, some of you may or may not know who I am, but my name is Heather Lutze, and I have been in the internet marketing space for, gosh, 14 years now, which scares me to say that. But this is my wonderful family. I have a 17-year-old boy, Evan, and a 13-year-old son named Kyle, and then my husband, Mark. He is actually my IT guy. So I really recommend it. if you guys can marry your IT guy, you'll save a lot of money in monthly fees. <laughs> but Mark is a fantastic uh, programmer and IT specialist. So I got real lucky as I am also in uh, IT as well. So I uh, just wanted to give you a sense of who I am and who my family is as we move forward. Now this is an interactive webinar. I absolutely hate webinars if you just sit back and don't engage. So this is your first chance to start engaging. What have you heard what have you heard about Pinterest? Just go ahead and quickly text message me. What's your feelings about Pinterest? What have you heard about Pinterest? And what's sort of your gut reaction about Pinterest overall? And just go ahead and text chat that to me in the questions area. Uh, Gloria says, it's for women who are looking for things. Excellent. <laughs> it's good for sharing recipes and crafts. Susan, great idea. What else do we have? Great for visual sharing from Susan. It's only for sharing personal craft pictures, Elaine. I use Pinterest as a way to share ideas with friends and others. Corey is a great place to find ideas for weddings. Love it, mostly for home improvement, retail, visual, female demographic. Okay, good. So what we're going to do is we're going to bust out of the whole concept of crafts and makeups and recipes and figure out how we can leverage this amazing marketing tool. Now here's the reason. So I'm a search engine marketing geek. Some of you have heard of search engine optimization. I call it findability, how to rank number one on Google for people who are looking for you. Here's a couple things I want you to remember. Pinterest is the fastest growing search engine. Uh, and people can actually go, will go in there and search for all different kinds of topics, not just crafts and photos and weddings. And also it is um, ranked and seen as a ranking signal by Google. So you will see Pinterest boards rank in Google, uh, and it will be a great way to leverage being findable on Google. So I have optimized specific assets, which I'm going to show you in my Pinterest boards and in my Pinterest account, to actually help me rank on Google. So it's not just about crafts, and it's not just about um, wedding photos, even though it might be fantastic for that. I'm, I'm assuming we're all on this call to make some money. And if we have to add one more social media site into the component, we want to make sure that it's actually going to deliver the results for bottom line uh, improvements. Why is Pinterest maybe not really helping us to be the most findable company? And can, if we add it into the mix, will that help? So what I want to think about is Pinterest is the second only to YouTube for time spent on a social site. So I'm sure all of you have been on YouTube, it's owned by Google. Well, Pinterest has a huge stickiness factor. And a lot of people will go in there, not just to search for recipes and weddings, but they will search for business outcomes, they'll search for all different kinds of videos. And Google, I'm sorry, Pinterest has really opened up their offering to business, which I'm going to show you today, and how you can really leverage a fun, easy, long engagement on Pinterest, but also throw in some of the business into the mix. Pinterest users spend more time on the site than both Facebook and Twitter combined. So it is a wonderful time sucker. <laughs> so you, you go in there and you start, and then three hours later, um, sir, some of the people on the, on the webinar can, can relate to this, but it is a very, very sticky site. has lots of great visuals. We love pretty pictures. You know, as a community of social engagers, we love to watch and click on pretty pictures. How many of you have been to googleimages.com? Just show of hands for me. I'm going to the hand. Okay, so some of you have. Great. If you haven't, images.google.com is the second way people use Google. So people love pretty pictures. Now, when I search on Google Images, and you can search for yourself, um, on Google Images, that's a pictorial representation of who you are to Google visually. 
So I want you to take that same concept and apply it to Pinterest. Pinterest is a visual images search engine and anything we tag or name in Pinterest is going to be a findable asset inside of Pinterest. 10% of customers are more likely to make a purchase if they're referred to a product through Pinterest. So let's just say I see something and then I share that. So when you see, and I'll go through the elements of Pinterest here, but Pinterest has a very high likelihood of purchase because you have a visual connection to it. So when you see a Pinterest image and you click on that image, then it is going to take you to the website where that Pinterest, that Pinterest image resides. So it's a wonderful way to find something you love, click on it, and actually go to buy. So if we're going to start really using this site, we have to start blending the personal aspects with the business aspects because people will purchase here, and Pinterest gives it a really nice little list. Pinterest generates more referral traffic to websites than any other social media site. Now this might be a really big shocker to you, but because it is such a visual engagement, it's not necessarily selling us when we see that image. It is really giving us some excitement about the potential of what that might be, either to wear it, to visit it, or to engage with that company. In fact, referring is what Pinterest does best. So let's take a look at this. Pinterest has more than these combined. So referral traffic sources, 3.6% on Pinterest. When I say referral, I mean from an image on Pinterest they click on that back to your website, we have a 3.6 referral percentage. YouTube is 1%, Google Plus is 0.22%, and LinkedIn is 02 So we definitely have a significant advantage in making sure that we are active and doing Pinterest. So let's talk about what is Pinterest. Why should we care about this website? Well, the first one is Pinterest is indeed a search engine, so of course, when I started looking at social media engagement, I'm like, I am not adding one more social media site to my marketing plan until I see that it helps me leverage ranking for my own website. It's seen as a ranking signal by Google. I am not interested in engaging in that content. And indeed, it is a ranking signal. It's part of your social signal package to Google, um, including Facebook and Twitter and Clout um, and all of those different um, social media sites, Google looks at this as a credibility indicator. And so it is indeed a search engine. <laughs> I like to call it a gift registry for life. So you're seeing all these great images, you're searching visually through things that give you an emotional connection. And because of that emotional connection, you are then clicking on the image and going to do something from that behavior. A place to keep your bucket list. So all the things you wish and hope, places to travel, things to do. Um, so it's a great way to collectively understand the, and visualize what's important to your ideal prospect. It's a wish book, a social network, has tons of pictures in it, and most importantly, it's an internet marketing tool. And that's what we're here today to talk about is how can we leverage this as a real internet marketing platform. This is a typical home feed on Pinterest. So what you see here is you'll see all different kinds of images from food to graphics to travel. And the great thing is I can customize this interface to exactly what I want based on what I'm looking for, based on my, so I look for, so I'm a professional speaker, so I do a lot of travel. So I have a Pinterest board that is specifically optimized for travel, road warrior, you know, great fun travel gadgets, things of that nature. I also am love fashion, so I have a whole thing on fashion. I have a whole thing on search engine marketing, all the tidbits and people I follow on search engine marketing. So it really is a snapshot of me in a much more global, than, a global basis than really what other search engines will give you. And it gives you a real representation of what makes me tick. What am I passionate about? What do I really want to continue to grow in over time? So let's go online. So what do you observe on Pinterest? So what I would like you to do if you are currently on Pinterest is to open up another screen right next to where you're at, pull up Pinterest.com. Now maybe you have a Pinterest account. If you do, then just log into your current Pinterest account. If you don't, don't set up a Pinterest account right now because I want you to stay focused on what we're talking about. But just look at the interface of Pinterest 
and take a look at what's on there right now. So what do you observe on Pinterest? What are the things that show up in your home feed? I've heard that Pinterest is just recipes and crafts and stuff. How is that going to help my business? So I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> so what I want you to think about is this is a, if you get on in on the, on the mix right now, there is a lot of activity when it comes to weddings and crafts for sure. But what I want you to understand is this, this website is quickly evolving. It's one of the fastest growing social media sites on the Internet now. So what we have to think about is where is it going? When should I get involved? Sort of like when websites started ranking in Google, right? When were you supposed to get involved in that? Would it better been better to get involved earlier or to sort of play catch up? So what I want you to think about is how can I play catch up? Okay, so I'm getting some good feedback coming in now. So what people are seeing is my categories, what they have posted. Christine has animals and sketches. Jennifer has whatever I've shared to other people. Rick has dogs, Oreos, and ice cream. I know what to get you for Christmas now. Probably not another dog, though. Okay, uh, clean eating is Stacy, not ice cream and Oreos. <laughs> Maybe Corey and, or I'm sorry, Rick and Stacy should talk. Uh, so we have branded quotes. Yeah, so Nicolette has branding quotes. I quote people all the time that are in my social site. And we have lots of other great, uh, other great, um, Elaine, all you have to do is go to Pinterest.com. And we may have to set you up an account if you haven't been there before. So Pinterest is valuable because of who uses it. So let's talk about this. Women in the U.S. between the ages of 25 and 55. So we don't want to discount this if you tend to just speak to, to men. Remember, we want to make sure that we are involved in, in all different kinds of buying cycles and demographics. A group that controls 85% of consumer purchasing. Now, let's not be fooled that consumer purchasing is both B2C and B2B. So just because you see lots of, of images for graphics and things, remember, social media sites are based on personal preference. When I am in Pinterest, I often will go off and search for other marketing luminaries. I will search for people um, like Search Engine Marketing Watch, which is one of my favorite search engine um, sites for keeping up on Google and Google rankings. Uh, so I do all kinds of things in there. And because I'm there for such a long period of time, of course, I make other buying decisions. I search for all different kinds of engagements. And that might be important to think about as, uh, as you're working through this process and thinking about, can I really touch 85% of a consumer purchasing audience? And how can I customize my offering to women? Because this is a highly female engagement. So let's understand some of the basic Pinterest basics and kind of walk you through what you're seeing when you're in Pinterest. So what you're going to see is you're going to see boards. So boards, I'm sorry, pins, apologize. Pins are individual images that link to content that's on the web. So just like I go, so let me go over here. I'm just going to jump over on my website here. I'm going to go to Pinterest. So just like you go to Google, to search for images. So let's go to images.google.com and I'm going to type in my name and you can do this on your own too. Okay, that's the wrong Heather Lutz. <laughs> that's the Heather Lutz on a reality television show. So this is all mine under Heather Lutzy. Now let's remember that this is a pictorial example of how Google sees my thought leadership in the world. So then when we go to Pinterest, when I type this in, These are all the visual examples of other people. So what we have to think about is you'll see my blog posts, you'll see all kinds of images from my book, and a wide variety of other things. So we want to think about a lot of these are my, are my blogs, are my videos. So how can I visually represent myself in a pictorial search engine, which is what you're seeing right now. So if you have Pinterest pulled up, what I want you to do is search for your name. So you can search for a competitor, you can search for your name, you can search for anything that you want that has to do with your industry, your name, whatever. So I typed in findability, which is a space I like to hang my hat, and you'll see here that some of these assets belong to me. Now some of them do not. So it's a great way for me to visually see. Now this is all B2B what you're seeing right now. All of this is B2B. And you'll see here 
I have my findability snapshots, I've got interviews, I've got all different kinds of things in here that are associated with me and my thought leadership in the world. So this is what we're talking about today is building brand and thought leadership recognition around your business. So we're not talking about weddings and recipes here. What's happening with Pinterest is there's a conversion, a conversion that's happening from recipes and wedding photos and fashion to women who want to get images and they want to get educated through visual uh, stimuli. So if you click on this, so if I click on this, this is one of my blog posts. If I click on this, this takes me to that image on my website. And then here you get, you get back to the image. So what we want to think about is how can I make sure that these images are being shared and they are being liked? And we want to make sure that all these are being shared and liked. Okay? So here's an example of one of my current blog posts right here. Now what I can do is I can then click on this as a searcher and it's going to go right to the blog post that's on my website. So this is a great way to take a visual graphic and turn it into some real activity on your website. And I'm going to show you how to really make that sing here as we go through this. So that's a pin. A pin is a pictorial representation of the content you have on the web. Then we get to, just like a pin board or a cork board, we take all those pins and we pin them up on the board. And what we're going to do is we're going to organize those pins and those boards based on themes. So all different kinds of themes, whether it be themes for you, themes for thought leaders you want to follow, things for quotes, whatever it is, you can have as many boards as you like. Then we have boards are followed by others. So once you create a huge group of these boards, just picture a wall. And you have a bunch of cork boards on that wall. And you've taken a bunch of newspapers. And you've cut out all these amazing things that you're interested in. You're going to now collect and organize those images into the similar kinds of themes or boards. Now, if you do a good job of collecting this information, then people are going to follow those boards. And that's really what we want to do is we want to have them follow that board. And then as you add additional content to that board, people are going to do more and more engagement of that. Okay, so let's talk about how we get set up with Pinterest. So business now, uh, Pinterest now has what they call a business account. Now this is really important for a couple reasons. You're not representing yourself necessarily as a person. You are representing yourself as a person who operates a business. This is a big distinguishing factor for anyone who is on uh, or wants to create a Pinterest account. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. So when you go to Pinterest and you go to set up a new account, now, let me, let me just make a quick comment here. If you've already set up a Pinterest account, you can convert this account to a business account. That's not a problem. You're not going to hurt yourself by doing that. It just gives you more flexibility to market with the pins. So um, that might be something to consider is to go ahead and switch your personal account to a business account. So it's going to ask for what kind of business are you, it's going to ask for your name, your email address. Of course, you have to set up a password. Now, let's talk about the profile information for a minute. So remember, I'm all about findability. If I'm going to take an, any time away from my business, I want to make sure that it ranks in search engines and is also findable inside of Pinterest. So my business name. So if you just use, I would use findability consulting. That is not a findable reference. So what I may want to do is title that SEO Workshops by Findability Consulting, SEO Training by Findability Consulting. So think about what's the word that people would search for if they don't know who you are. So that might be Elaine, that might be for you, it might be military speaker. Um, it might be for Phil Benito who is doing this amazing golf tours in New York City. You might do golf tours New York City or NYC and then your name. So keep in mind that you want to really leverage that business name to have a keyword in it because they want Google to pick up on that and rank it under that phrase. Again, for your username, you may want to do something like SEO training, golf tours NYC, marketing speaker, military speaker, whatever the case may be. Don't just make up, don't just use H, let's see, as your username. It's important to create consistency and how you name these profile elements. And again, your profile image is very important. 
do not upload a picture of your logo. Upload a picture of you maybe doing what you do best on the golf course, on the stage, whatever, but put a picture there that's a high quality headshot or photo of you in action with your business. So let's say you have a large group. You want to make sure that you have everyone in their best outfits holding your logo. Take a picture of everyone holding your logo, maybe a big poster board with your logo on it, and up upload that to your profile image. That is a great representation of you as human beings on your Pinterest account. Okay, create boards relevant to your target market. So this is a San Diego marketing company. We do a lot of work in San Diego, love San Diego. So we, we want, want to think about if we are San Diego apartments. So I work for a big property company. Um, they have like 13 different properties in San Diego. So how in the world, we can't just talk about you know, rent an apartment in San Diego, lease an apartment in San Diego, buy an apartment in San Diego, right? Those boards would be incredibly boring. So what we want to think about is what's my thought leadership about? What are all the different micro buckets or boards that I can create content around? So think about I'm going to create a things on flavor of San Diego, San Diego restaurants, San Diego places to live, right? So I'm going to feature my, feature my apartment living there. San Diego style, San Diego family, um, how to furnish your apartment in San Diego. You know, so what we're trying to do is create a thought leadership profile for your business at, for your business entity that shows both a personality and it shows a real business acumen that you know a lot about what you do and you know everything that surrounds it. So I want you to go ahead and text chat for me. What do you think a couple of your boards might look like in your business? Okay, Susan Silver says, logos of companies I work with. Fantastic idea. Show me all the pictures, but make sure to link back to the case studies on your website, not necessarily to their sites. Nicolette says, are clients using our printers? Great idea, Nicolette. You could, have, you could actually have a board for each kind of printers you repair. And then inside of there, you could talk about how to use it, user's guides, how to repair them, how to fix them, all those kinds of things. What else do we have here? Oh, great. You guys are like totally engaged. I love it. Okay, so pictures of clients we work with. Phil was talking about uh, his golfing clients. Our technicians maintaining our printers. Great. Frontline employees, Greg said, management, executive leadership. So let's talk about this. One of our boards could be meet our team, right? Meet our SEO training team, meet our golf team, meet our whatever that is. Remember, you want to name each board like a page in your website. So think about not just say meet our team, but meet our print repair team. We are, meet our New York uh, golf tour team. Make sure to um, optimize those with keywords as well. Uh, gosh, yeah, pictures of golf carts. Flat daddy pictures. Great, Elaine. So you could have a whole... Elaine Dumbler does this amazing thing called Flat Daddy. So for military families who have loved ones that are deployed, they create this image, a full-size image, that's like a poster board that they can carry around with them everywhere. And that's called a Flat Daddy. And so I would love, uh, Elaine, to see a board on people with their Flat Daddy images. Um, I think that would be fantastic. So you guys are getting it. Wonderful. Video stills. So you guys are on the ball. Great job, everyone. So this just I want you to think about, it's not about your personal preference here, everybody. This is about making the switch from personal preference to the preference of your consumers, of your customers. So if I came here and I wanted a pictorial board um, vision, if you will, of all the things that you can help or a thought leadership on. So I might have a whole board section on marketing speakers and all the different marketing speakers and maybe who I compete with. I might also have a board on how do you choose a marketing speaker or even an event planner board. And all the things in my event planner board are going to have checklists and downloads and case studies of mine and AV requirements and my bio. So think of these like little micro website pages and how can I really optimize those. Okay, so here's how we're going to add a pin. So once you've created, what I recommend is you go in and create all your boards, or at least the boards you know you have something to pin onto. Once you've created those boards, then what you're going to do is you're going to start collecting the images. So what I would recommend you do is once you've collected, started these boards, so maybe you have a marketing board, meet our team board, what we do board, 
you know, whatever those things are. Then I want you to think about what do I have on my computer right now in a pictorial format um, that I could post. So I want you to think about images of your staff events, images of your speaking events, images of your marketing materials. Maybe even you've attended a conference and you want to post all your images from the conference. Maybe of client and client testimonials. Anything you can put up there that are going to be a representation of whatever you want to put into that board. All right, so let's talk about how do we make this form, this board super findable. We want it to not only rank in Google, but we also want to make sure that it's findable by people who are searching inside of Pinterest. So let's talk a little bit about that. So during my webinar series, I did six weeks every other week, and the very first week we look at what's going on with the customer. What are they thinking? What problems show up in their lives? And then I show you the keyword tools to actually access what they're thinking. So are they having problems in their life? Are they, are they concerned about something that could happen? Are they, are they complaining about something? So the keyword tools that we show you during the webinar series help you tap into exactly what are these keywords. And what we want to do is then label each of the boards those keyword phrases. So let, let me talk, about, talk to you about how I might label my board. So one of my boards might be marketing speaker. One of my boards might be SEO speaker. One of my might, might be DIY, DIY SEO. There's a lot. There's about 1,300 searches a month for DIY SEO. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out what images can I put in there that supports that concept. So what Google does is it comes, it sees your Pinterest board, it indexes all your boards, and based on how those boards are titled, those boards will rank in Google. So just keep in mind that you want to always not just be naming them fun, cutesy names, which is fine. I have a lot of those cutesy names on my board as well. But I have other boards that are on my account that also are for business. So I'm trying to blend the two. Because when I first developed my Pinterest account, it was indeed a personal account. And now I've migrated it over to a business account. So I'm adding more and more of the personalization. The next thing is to include a call to action in your pin descriptions. This is really important. A lot of people will just grab an image off a website and then throw them in to Pinterest without making any comments. Now, what you need to do is make sure that you are putting a description and a call to action in every single pin description. And so whether you want to put a website link, a phone number, a call to action when they get to the site, don't just post it and leave it. Uh, make sure you get some content in there so that it really stands the test of time. So I might offer a, a free checklist. I have lots of white papers. I also offer an SEO findability snapshot that lets people fill out a form on my website and then they get a document sent to them with all the things they can improve on their site. So make sure to offer things here that really are going to stand the text of, test of time and you're going to offer it over a long period of time. All right, so here's another really great tip is install the pin it button on your browser. So um, I can actually show you this if you don't mind me switching back again here. Okay, so if you look here at the top right-hand corner, I'm in Chrome right now. If you look at the top right-hand corner, you'll see this little pin button right here. Now, that pin button was installed as a Chrome app add-on. It's a Chrome add-on. So when I add this on here, any page I am on, it picks up all the images from that particular page. I can then pin this right from that page that I'm on, and then I can, I can go ahead and I can type in, you know, findability snapshot, help to spell it right, snapshot assessment, go here, okay? And then I can go ahead and put findability.com. Okay, then I can pin that, oops, I can pin that directly to one of my boards. And you'll see here, I have all different kinds of boards. So I can pin it to my, get my Findability University, and then I can hit pin. Now that automatically pins it to that group. And then if I want to see that now, I can go to Pinterest, and I can actually go and see that board. So that's a really nice way to do it, and it's an easy way to make sure that everything, let me take you back to my board, and I'll show you how that looks. Okay, so when you come back to my board, you'll see here what's your findability score. So this is specifically for 
business, and I post all the tools of my trade inside of this board. Okay? So hopefully that gives you a better idea of why you would have that pin it button. So let's just say I go to another page of my website. Let's just say I go to um, so search, let's see, search marketing land is one of my favorite sites. If you guys are geeks at all and you're interested in search marketing, this is definitely the page to go to. Um, so let's just say I want to pin something off here. I'm going to go to the Pinterest button. I'm going to pick one of the images. So I, I want to pick something that really has a pow, you know, something that really catches people's interest. So maybe I'm going to, I kind of like this picture here. So I'm going to grab that picture off the page. It's automatically going to grab the URL from that image. And then I can say post to Facebook, post to Twitter. Uh, be careful how much you use that because you can really spam your feed on, on Facebook and Twitter. So use that judiciously. I'm going to delete whatever's in here. And I'm going to you know, type in whatever I put in here for my offer. I'm going to pick the one that makes the most sense for where I am marketing this under marketing speaker, whatever, and then I'm going to hit pin it. And now that instantly goes to my board. I haven't even logged into Pinterest right now. I'm just, I'm doing it from a site. So when you are going through your day and you're trying to figure out what can I pin, how can I make this easy, just do it from the pages that are normally comfortable to you. And don't try to, don't try to add it into the mix necessarily. Just do it organically as you roll through your day, as you roll through the pages that are part of your business, like, so, so I know I have a number of speakers on, on the call today. Maybe think about uh, if I go to a bureau, you know, go to a bureau site and, and, you know, hit the pin it button from your browser and do that. Um, I see Amy Nugent. She's also one of my past clients. Amy, you can go to any pageant website. So Amy sells these beautiful pageant accessories. She has an amazing website for people who love pageants. And any pageant site you go to, Amy, you can just go ahead and grab those images off there and, and share them. So also Sherry uh, Gott, which is also another past client of mine. Sherry, you can go ahead and go to any of those really cool, like do-it-yourself costume um, uh, posts and then pin those to one of your DIY costume boards. So that might be something to think about, everyone, as you're on this. Okay. Also, let's talk about using high-impact visuals. This is really difficult because we tend to, to use clip art, and clip art is boring. So I really want to recommend that you stay away from clip art. You use original photos or photos that you create. Okay, so let's keep going here. Uh, also create valuable blog content. So every time you post a blog, I want you to make sure to share it here too. It will grab the image off your blog and post it right there. So that can really work brilliantly for expanding the, the marketability and findability of your blogs. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to install the pin it button on our site. So when I come to this amazing article, um, I can go ahead and pin it right away. I'm not going to have to wait or to log into my Pinterest account. Study what other leaders are doing. If, if you want to go in there and type in a keyword phrase like marketing speaker, see what other people are doing in Pinterest. So let, let's do that, shall we? All right, so let's go to Pinterest. I'm going to type in, let's see, SEO training. So now all these people have come up that have included or optimized their posts for SEO training. So you'll see here that I can follow. So this is one person I admire greatly. This is Rand Fishkin. And Fish, Fishkin? I think that's his name, right? Or Fishburn, sorry. Anyway, he's a brilliant, brilliant SEO trainer. Fishkin, there he is. So what I'm going to do is I will take his image. And then I will go ahead, I can visit his website, I can like it, which is just something fun to do. I can send this as an email to people that are in my circle. I can also share that and I can go to his website. So it's a really nice way to think about how can you also share luminaries and visionaries um, in your space. Because remember, experts know experts and we want to make sure we do that. So that's kind of a fun way is to go ahead and search your competitors, see what they're up to. All right, also Pinterest has a great smartphone app. So I want to really suggest that you take a look at download this. When you're do at an event, you're at a conference, you're doing something that shows the internal reality of your business and what you're doing every day, take pictures of that and then post it on Pinterest simply and quickly. And that's a great way. Remember, we're just going to use images here. 
so the images are a big part of you've got to take those from your smartphone to really capture interesting photos. You can also do, you know, videos of whenever I run into people who attend my trainings and my live events, um, I'll often grab their testimonial by my iPhone and I'll post it to my case studies or my testimonials page on Pinterest. Okay. So the next thing is we're going to set up our Pinterest analytics. So just text message, just chat me, how many of you currently have analytics? So what's a good idea here, guys, if we're going to add another social media site to the mix, it better pay off because I'm exhausted. <laughs> There's only so much I can do in a day or a month or a year. And I focus on, I focus on Google Plus because it is a huge ranking signal for Google and we want to make sure Google sees me as a thought leader. I also post on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. That's it. So I limit my social engagement to the sites I know I can actively participate in. Google Analytics will help you to monitor the referrals that are coming from your Pinterest account and any social media account back to your website. So guys, if we're going to, if we're going to engage in social media, it better be paying off. And we want to make sure that we're tracking the engagement. And Google Analytics does a beautiful job of setting up and tracking engagement from the particular posts. Now, here's a really cool tip here. So identify the top referrers and reach, uh, reach out. So here's what you can do. So let me show you. Just you, Oops, sorry. You're going to try this yourself. So what I want you to do is see right here at the bottom of, I want you to copy this or just type it in, Pinterest.com forward slash source forward slash yourwebsite.com. So let me show you what that looks like. And go ahead and just pull that up. Just open up another browser. And I'm going to, I think I've got this pulled up already, but I'll do it again here. Pinterest. Come on, Pinterest. Okay, so you'll see here I put Pinterest.com forward slash source forward slash findability. Now you want to put your website at the back there, not mine. <laughs> so you're going to want to put your website.com, just, just like as you see it right there. Then you're going to hit enter. So what this is, is all the other people, whether it be from my source or some other source. So you'll, you'll see here, Groovy City has actually shared my post to their audience. So let's see what else we can find here. Um, looking, 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 looking. Okay, so what we can see here is all the different referrals coming from other sites. And this can be really helpful for understanding, here's Colorado Women's Chamber of Commerce. They shared this to their group, and they took it and shared it to this group here. We love our members, so that's a great way to do that as well. So if you're looking for referrers and who is grabbing yours, so here's social media managers. These are so funny. I love these. Uh, what my friends think I do, what my mom thinks I do, what my coworkers think I do, <laughs> what society thinks I do, what I think I do, and what I actually do. So keep in mind that this was shared on a number of different sites. Um, so it's nice to know that people are actually doing things with your, your material that you're creating. Okay. So I wanted to kind of show you some of my favorite tools for using Pinterest. So Pinterest is super simple, everyone. If you get in there, it's very intuitive. You'll get it right away. Just create your board, start pinning, just start having fun. Remember, though, it's for business. So try to keep it uh, a nice combination between fun business and professional business, and maybe a little bit of crazy business, but try to keep it on the business side. So I'm going to show you some of these websites because they can be incredibly helpful. So make sure you write this down if you have a pen in front of you. The first website is called Pick monkey.com, P-I-C-M-O-N-K-E-Y.com. Now this is a great uh, photo creation site and you can get in there and do all kinds of interesting photos and photo creation. The next one is shareasimage.com, shareasimage.com. Again, a great way to upload a photo and you can then put text on top of it and instantly share it to Pinterest. It's really, really easy. Um, the next one is pin alerts. So pinalerts.com is Google Alerts for Pinterest. So you put your domain name in there, and anyone who talks about you, references your company on Pinterest, you're going to get an email notification, which is nice. And you can digest that so it comes to the end of every day so you're not filling your inbox with, with, with images. 
And then finally, Canva.com. So I'm going to show you a couple of, of cool sites, and one of them I just thought of that I did not write down. So, so a lot of times is, what images am I allowed to share, right? We don't want to get you in trouble by using images that aren't yours. So here's a kind of a fun thing that you can use that will make this process really easy. And I'll make sure I'll text chat this in for you too. Search dot, and write this down, creativecommons.org. So search.creativecommons.org, and I'll just share that all with you through chat. So what I want you to remember is this is actually a convention by which I can filter out all the imagery that is not licensed or is going to, is going to get me in trouble if I use it. So it's not copyrighted, it's royalty free and license free. Now, I've selected Google Images here, but any of these assets you can search for royalty free images. So let's go ahead and search for Google Images. And I'm going to search for San Diego because where I'm headed over there here. So you search for San Diego. Any image that you want, by the way, you can search for. Now, every image you're seeing right now is royalty and licensed free, meaning I can use any of these images without worries of repercussions. So what I can do is what you do is then you click on this. Now I've got this great image here. You can then, so I've got a little share as image little icon right here because because probably I installed it at some point. But you can right mouse click on this and just save this image. So save this to your desktop or wherever you save your images. So that's step one is use search.creativecommons.org. Make sure to bookmark that. That's going to give you access to all the license and royalty free images. So you're never going to get in trouble for using an image that you did not own and you had not had the licensing right to use, which is a very big deal on the internet right now. All right, now I'm going to take you to my second favorite site, which is called Canva, canva.com. And you can create some fantastic images in here. So let me show you how this works. You can do a Google header. You can do social media. You can do presentations, posters, Facebook covers. So if those of you want to change your Facebook cover on a regular basis, you can do all different kinds of things, Twitter headers, cards, business cards, you name it, you can do it in here. So let's do it. Let's do a, I think Pinterest is in here. Yeah, let's do a Pinterest post. So the nice thing about this is it's already going to optimize that image for Pinterest for you. So what you can do here when you come in here is you can choose from a bunch of layouts. But what I love is you can actually upload your own image. So let me show you how I do this. So I'm going to pick my San Diego image that I just got. Okay, here we go. So let's go to uploads. I'm going to choose my San Diego image right here. I'm going to hit open. Now it's going to upload. So here's my image. I can drop it right on to the screen. You guys see that? So now I have a royalty free image that I'm welcome to use. And I can just stretch this out, make it as big as I want. And I can roll it over here. So now I've got this great image of San Diego, but it's not really interesting. So what you can do is you can come in here to layouts or you can come in here to text. So text is super cool. So what I can do is I can just drop in all these images are free. Okay, so I can drop in this guy here. So I, I didn't have to think about it. I didn't have to find it or create it. I can make it any size I want. So here I can change this to um, visit me. And then I can put something like San Diego. And I could put maybe something like workshop. Whatever, I'm just making this up as I go. And then what I want to encourage you, though, is to make sure to always include calls to action. So I'm going to put this up here in the corner. Now I'm going to find something that gives me a call to action. So maybe I'm going to use this one. Now I want you to put, so I'm going to put my number, 888-588-9326. And I'm going to put something like, you know, register today, whatever. Okay. So now I've created a custom image. I can instantly share this. Okay, so obviously Canvas being a little weird today. So here you'll see here, I can, I can get the URL right away from it right here, or I can publish it as an image. So if I publish this as an image, now I have this image, it saves automatically into my, into my documents here on Canva. And I can share it instantly through Facebook or Twitter. And then when I go back in here to Uploads, You'll see here I have a bunch of images I've uploaded. And when I go back to my home screen, 
this will be waiting for me. And I can go ahead and I can instantly use this image. So hopefully you guys like that tool. It is awesome. You can like look like a genius and not have to do really any work whatsoever. And I've shown you a tool by which you can, um, that you can really use that's going to serve you. And not only does it serve you through Pinterest, but it's also going to serve you through all your social media sites. I want to really encourage you, especially if you're going to post blogs or you're going to post anything, make sure the image you're sharing in social, in Twitter, in Pinterest is a really captivating, beautiful image. Um, images of stock photography do not convert. Um, of course, images of babies and kittens, if you can kind of build that in, they still have the number one click share or click um, conversion of any other images on the Internet. Now, babies and uh, puppies do not really work real well for me. But you can always come up with something fun and interesting that you can share. I think Pinterest is really fun. And I think the bottom line is, is have fun, right? Don't, don't go like, oh, I hate social media. Make sure you're having fun and you're really getting in there and having a good time. Okay, so Kristen has, Kristen has a question for me. How can you tell if your existing account is personal or business? So just log into your existing account, Kristen. Go into account settings and it will tell you if it's a personal or business. Corey has a question for me. How much text do you need to include with various images? You know, Corey, this is really about visual clickable moment. So what I want you to think about is make sure that you use content on there that gets them to act quick. Uh, maybe even say click now, watch now, um, things like that, but make it very simple and very easy to read. Elaine asked me a question. If you inadvertently pin a picture to the wrong board, can you move it? Yes, you can, Elaine. You can move it by just deleting it out of there. Hopefully you've got it already saved in your computer and then just reposting. So you can, you, can, you can delete a whole board if you want. You can also have something I didn't have a chance to do called secret boards. Now secret boards are really fun if you're doing like a specific event or you have special offers for clients. Um, I have a couple secret boards and I invite clients to come to the secret boards and I have all kinds of giveaways and downloads there that other people just from Joe Public would not be able to see. So that's really fun. Okay, Heather from Steve. Hi, Steve. Heather, can you add an order here button, to, excuse me, to Pinterest for a seminar or a book? So, so what you would do, Steve, is you'd create your image. You'd put like a um, um, order now button or register now button. And when they clicked on that, it would go right to a registration page for your seminar. Do you have a checklist uh, of all these tips you've offered? I do not have a checklist. But I will be, um, um, I do have some white papers and things that are on my website. So if you go to findability.com, go to the search bar and just type in Pinterest. I have a ton of, of white papers on Pinterest that you're welcome to download. What are your major minor don'ts? Oh, good question. Uh, the major and uh, majors are really all I care about. Uh, majors would be just talking about yourself, pushing advertising all the time. Don't post inappropriate images to have their, capture their attention. Uh, don't obviously post anything that would be inflammatory um, or overly provocative, especially if you're trying to go from a business standpoint. Uh, Greg has a question for me. Can I change my business name, not the username? I don't actually know. You'd have to log in there and see what they'll do. I think if you convert it from a personal to a business, they will let you change that once again. Okay. Uh, thanks. A quick follow-up. Okay, so Corey says, should the text always be on the image like you showed with Canva, or can you include it in a post and not on the image? So I, I, you can do both, um, Corey. I like having the image and a call to action. It, it shortcuts what you want them to do on the image, but you could absolutely, in the description underneath the image, you can go ahead and put that in. Okay, one final question. Where do I go on my account to convert my current to the business one? My understanding is when you log in and you go to the profile page, it will either prompt you to change or it will give you the option to change from personal to business. Okay, so I wanted to talk a little bit about, with your permission, um, I'm going to give you some more ideas on how to continue this path forward. So I am all about getting found online. And obviously, my second book, Thumbonomics, which is available on Amazon, uh, also I have a findability app. So if you guys look for me on the App Store or the Google Play Store, you can have free access to all of my um, audios and eBooks right through the app, and the app's totally free. So you're welcome to go in there. Just search for my name, Heather Letsy with an E, um, and you'll be able to download that app absolutely free. 
And you can also listen to all the chapters of my books while you're driving or you're on an airplane or whatever. We can spend some quality time together and educate you around findability online. So a lot of the businesses that I speak to, I speak to conventions and organizations all over the world, a lot of them are sort of shooting at social media. And I think that social media is a great thing if you're going to dive in fully. But I think if, if you're, the foundation of your house is not properly set up, then no matter how you decorate uh, or paint, <laughs> it's not going to make it any more profitable. So a lot of what I do with clients is all about findability, getting findable to people who don't know you exist but should. So here's the things I get. So I talk to a lot of Vistage clients, uh, CEO groups. I've done hundreds of them all over the U.S. And these are the biggest things, the biggest mistakes even smart business owners make to keep them frustrated with stagnant business growth, slowing sales, and lagging lead sources. So all of you are on this webinar to increase your findability online and increase the awareness that Google has for you as well as the awareness that your clients have. So what I want to show you is a couple of things. So the number three biggest mistake is not thinking like the customer. So oftentimes, especially in social media, you are getting a lot of, look at me, look at me, right? You guys all see that, that Stuart Smalley from Saturday Night Live, so that whole thing, I'm smart enough and I'm pretty enough and by gosh, people like me, but you're not really talking about what's important to them. So it's very important you think like the customer. The number two thing that people do is they do not know what the competitor mindset is. What are they doing? What keywords are they using? Um, how, can I run reports on their site and figure out do I want to align with them or do I want to do something totally different? And the number one mistake that business owners make is your company is not findable. Meaning when I search for any series of keyword phrases, I'm not finding you, whether it be in a social site, which is Thumbonomics covered in my second book, or whether it's in Google, which is what findability formula is about my first book. So let's talk about this. So Google expects that you're a professor. Google was founded on the concept of professorship content. Uh, Larry Page and Sergey Brin built a database as part of a doctoral process, a project, to index professors. And no difference is now. So if you're a professor in marketing, you're a professor in law, you're a professor in all these different topics, then you've got to prove it. And you prove it by having a great website. But now Google has expanded its algorithm to also include social signals. That's Pinterest, that's Facebook, that's Twitter. But if you don't use the words your consumers or your potential prospect are using, you're not a professor to them. And Google's watching all this engagement from your website to your social to your blogging. This is kind of the big part of this process. So there's some, some interesting numbers that I love to share because I'm kind of a numbers geek. 53% of people click on the first position in Google. So think about that. 53%, right? That's the number one organic listing on Google. 15% click on number two. So really what we want to think about is, what does this really mean to our businesses? Well, 86% of people never scroll down on the search result page. So we're very, very impatient. 86% never scroll down. And then we have 92% never go to page two. So if we're not there, you know, we're not findable. And what I want to challenge you, whether it be in a social media environment or on a search engine, what is, what is it costing you to be invisible? So you're not being findable under so for me, it would be marketing speaker, it would be SEO speaker, it would be SEO training, SEO workshops. What is it costing me not to be findable under those phrases? Well, there are very strategic, non-technical, simple, no geek speak ways of doing this yourself. And I want you to consider joining me. We cover this in the Findability Profits Lab. It's a six-week webinar series. And you know, whenever I'm, I join a lot of webinars, and I love webinars, and I know how frustrating it can be if you take a webinar and you don't actually act on the material. And I've done this, and I know what it's like. So let me just walk you through sort of some other options you have in regard to this. So these are some examples of some in-house trainings I've done. And you'll see here that what you're seeing behind you is we have a very high-tech way of architecting websites, which is taking sticky notes, big sticky notes, and we do the keyword research and we actually architect the website around how people search. Not how we think about ourselves, but how people search. And we're able to find so many more search opportunities for your site. 
And not just using phrases that are important to you that you've created, but really using language that other people are searching for. So I wanted to give you a sense. So I bit lead this SEO article from Forbes because I think it's very interesting. $3,000 a month to run a successful online marketing campaign. $50,000 annual cost for hiring an entry-level SEO in-house. Maybe we all should all change jobs if we're not quite making that mark. <laughs> it's always a good backup option. And then 70000 to hire a real expert level, hit the ground running SEO professional. So I just want to give you an idea that if you are not currently getting results from your site and your social, then this Findability Profits Lab is something I want you to consider joining me with. It's $497, and it is a six-week program every other week. Now, we start July the 18th. Now, let me walk you through what you get for this. So obviously we have different amounts of money. I know we're not going to spend that today, but I want you to think about what is the smallest amount of money to get the biggest amount of return. Remember, we have to think about what is it costing us to be findable online. So here's Findability Profits Lab. So it's $497. The investment is $497. It's six live sessions. Now I've taken a ton of webinars, and I'm often out of breath or I can't keep up. So what we're doing is they're every other Friday starting July the 18th. Now here's the great part. This webinar will be archived as well as my Google authorship arc, um, that we did last month is archived in what we call the Findability Vault. It is a member-only login area. It has all six of the videos in a home course study, self-paced, so you can do them yourself at your own time. But you can also jump in and the live events as well. We'd love to have you on those. Now here's the great part is we throw in two other colleague tickets for free. You can invite your mom, you can invite another colleague, you can invite your webmaster, your content writer to walk the path with you. We also give you the support from me. You get an hour after every call with me to answer all your questions. How do I use the keywords? How do I map my website? Um, and if you go to this URL, bit.ly slash findability U718, I walk you through all of each session. We cover keywords. We cover keyword tools. We, I show you all kinds of spying technology so you can spy on all your competitors. What keywords are they using? What are they doing on their website? And finally, I show you how to architect your website like I showed you with those sticky notes. I show you how to do that, and you have accountability to get it done through a private Facebook page. Now here's the deal. I know that these things are risky and I know there's a lot of snake oil people out there. I've, I've met a lot of them actually. Um, this is a, I give you a one year 100% money back guarantee. If you fully implement, you show up on every call, you do the things I tell you and you still don't see a return within a year, I will give all $497 back. No questions asked. So I really, I really care about your success. And I've, I've worked with geeks and SEO professionals for my entire professional career. And I figured out that my passion, my calling, is to help business owners finally figure this out and give you the control back in your life. And I'm hoping that you'll consider doing that and joining us for this webinar series. So everyone, thank you so much for joining our Pinterest Findability uh, uh, webinar today. I hope you found the content to be valuable. Uh, it's all about findability for me, and if you can leverage Pinterest to find one more client, then it was worth your time today. This, this recording will be posted into the Findability Vault, and I will also um, have continuing information on Findability University if you want to follow me on Facebook at Heather Lutze, L-U-T-Z-E, and don't forget to download the Findability app.